Hello everybody, I want to share with you how we made our hand dipped candles using an old candle. It was an, a really large three wick candle and it had burned really deep down into the center of the candle. And I'm just kind of showing you there how we took off those larger bits and then put them in one of these pots that are for candle making. They're tall and they're kind of skinny. Now I put it onto my smallest burner on the lowest flame and it took about a half an hour for all of these pieces to melt. The thing was that once it melted, it actually was about 200 degrees, which is much higher than the melting temperature for wax. I'm gonna show you a few different methods of what we did here. The first thing is that we're going to dip candles using a piece of string. This is just Baker's twine, and we're just gonna cut it so that it's twice as long as the depth of our wax. That way we can dip two candles at one time. But because this wax was so hot, it was really hard to get our candles to grow. So now we're gonna do a different method in which we have first cooled our wax, so it's just right above the melting temperature for the wax, and we're also dipping it in cold water in between each dip, and you can see they turned out a lot nicer. Now I'm going to show you another method and that's to use weights at the bottom of your string. Now this helps keep your candles down submerged in the wax as well as in the water. So I'm just going to set my little weight here with a little bit of wax. Now you can also have an alternative method by just tying the little weights at the bottom with your string. It turns out that we didn't like this method too much and you'll see why in a little bit. But I went ahead and secured both those weights to the bottom of the string and now we can begin dipping them. Now the first method I want to show you is just dipping them into the wax, which is a little bit cooler now, it's not quite as hot. And as you do it, you're going to see that the wax builds up on those little weights. Now here's another method, again with the weights, but this time in between each dip in the wax, we're going to put these in the water. And the weights are really important at this point, otherwise your candles will float to the surface. So the weights help keep your candles in the water which cools down the wax so that you can get a thicker application of wax the next time you dip it into your warmed wax. But you can see that two things happen. One, quite a bit of wax starts to build up at the bottom of your candles and we don't have a whole lot of wax and so it's going to make our candles quite small in the end. And the other thing, and it's probably because we're a little hasty here, is that the waters are starting to make little ripples along our candles so they're not really smooth the way tapers normally are. So at this point, you're going to see that there is quite a substantial amount of buildup towards the bottom, not just on those little weights, but even below. And since the candles are still quite warm, I can just go ahead and pull that right off. I'm gonna do that on both of them, and then I'm going to take a pair of scissors, and I'm going to cut right above the weights, and I'm just gonna cut right through the string. I'm gonna do it to both sides, and because the wax is still quite warm, I'm just gonna reshape the bottom a little bit, and then you wanna go ahead and continue dip, dipping your candles a few more times. Now, overall, we found that if we cooled the wax to the correct temperature, and were a little more patient between dips, we got a really nice candle that wasn't so ripply. And I think that's probably because of the water, and because we're probably a little bit inexperienced. <laughs> So this is what it looks like when they're done. They burn beautifully. Obviously you want to trim them so that they're single candles. And this is one that we were playing around with. We twisted two of them together while they were still warm for a nice alternative. So if you want more pictures and complete directions, you can check them out on my website at pepperandpine.com. And if you click on the screen, you can see some of our other projects.